Hello, welcome to Guides to the Unknown. I'm Kristen. I'm William. William, are you ready to get scared? I am. Do are we you? ever get scared? Sometimes during I'm the show. A little spooked. Or, yeah, it'd be funny if we had an episode where we were like. <sighs> <laughs> I'm guys. I'm genuinely scared, guys. I think we have to stop. Stop talking about that. I'm terrified. <laughs> um, but William, I'd like you to do your best. Okay, fine. By all means, I, I will be uh, diving in. Every yeah. week, Kristen and I research mm-hmm. topics from the world of horror, share them with each other, and you. The show comes out every Friday. All major podcast apps, you can even watch it on YouTube.com slash TalkBomb. That's right. Let's chop all the rest out. Here we go. Okay. Showtime. Uh, whoa. Oh, okay. That did kind of scare me. Damn it. <laughs> I mean business. Uh, I'm going to go first. Yep. Um, this show is releasing uh, one day after Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Thanksgiving. A time for everybody to come together as a family. And remember genocide <laughs> and how we stole the com- the country? Oh, that's that's scary in a different way. Yeah. No, I just wanted to talk about that feeling you get when your family all comes together. Uh-huh. And so I think that, you know what? On this show, why don't we talk about another kind of family? They're kooky. They're spooky. Oh, okay. I like this. The Adams Family. Good job. Thank you. Did you think of this because of what I posted on Instagram the other day? What did you post on Instagram the other day? I sent it to you. I posted that I I said that I adore Adam's family values except for the fact that you see Uncle Fester's O face. Oh, oh maybe I did. I forgot you <laughs> yeah. wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that, that was stuck in my head. <laughs> it's gross. It is. It is gross. That's yeah. in two? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's in because Adam's that's family. when Debbie comes into the picture. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Debbie. Oh my God! Um, yeah, maybe maybe that was what put yeah. it in, in my head a little bit. Amazing. Um, maybe it was already percolating. You sent it into my head, causing me to write the fake tweet. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, uh, but so the Adams family, honestly, it hasn't been around for a long time. Now. I know. Uh, and I'm sure I've missed them. Most people are probably aware of what the Adams family is in concept, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Gomez and Morticia. Their kids, Wednesday and Pugsley. Of course, there's old Uncle Fester. And who could forget Grandmama? Of course. Ring the bell. Here comes Lurch. And of course, their pet thing. Yeah. A disembodied hand that crawls all over the house like a cat right. or something. Um, but th- it goes back a-, a long way. And it started, it feels like something that would have started as like a sitcom or something like that. Yeah. But it started, in fact, as a set of comics. Oh. Okay. Like one panel comics. Oh, I didn't know that. Like yeah. the far side, but sweet and scary. Yeah. Huh. Yes, exactly. Uh, it was created by cartoonist Charles Adams. Okay. So it's like his There you family. go. Yeah. And the, the comics, uh, there were 150 of them, and they ran primarily in the New Yorker. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? I'm surprised to hear that. Yeah. A very like high brow. I was about to say that's very like classy. I would have thought exactly what you thought that it started as a sitcom and just kind of grew from there. Not that it came from like highfalutin yeah. beginnings. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And not only that, they but, deserve like, it. Every description of the Adams family, just bare concept, is also very highbrow. They talk about how it was uh, lampooning the concept of the uh, the typical like twentieth century family. Yeah, yeah. You know, just with like these dark twists okay to everything that they do um did you look and did those twists have like i don't know could you trace them back to political things or whatever like were they like lampooning the excess of the time and some you know what i mean something like that yeah no i don't know I, yeah I, i'm not sure it's exactly. just like we're taking the american family of two parents and two kids and just making it weird just twisting it cool. just making it dark so like yeah. all of them like there would be like single panel things there would be the the adams family at the beach and Pugsley has a pet octopus. Like, it'd just be like odd yeah. things. Uh, but really, what I think was sort of the genius stroke is that they aren't like monsters. Mm-hmm. They're not trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. They all genuinely love each other. Oh, yeah. And Gomez and Morticia have quite a thing going on. They do. <laughs> yeah. They are sexually active. Yes. <laughs> um, but like, uh, they, they're a normal family. They're just weird. Right. And so it's almost the idea that like outsiders look at them and would consider them to be strange. Right. The Adams family seems to see no difference between themselves and anyone. Yes. Else. Yes. Absolutely. Which That's one of their like. defining characteristics, I feel. Yeah, exactly. And like at a certain point, they were almost like a goth cultural icon. Mm-hmm. It was like if you could be anybody, you'd want to be. Uh, somebody who could belong in the Adams family. Yeah, totally. You know, I certainly felt that way. Oh yeah, Wednesday Adams was like fully awesome to me. Yeah, totally. So actually, why don't we? 
why don't you tell everybody like what your familiarity level is with the Adams family? Because there's a lot of like shows and right. cartoons and movies and stuff. But like, what's the stuff that you know about the Adams family? So I watched. I mean, I don't think I watched it a ton, but I definitely saw like the live action show from I guess sixties, the sixties or whatever, white. the black and white show. Yeah. So I was aware of that. And then when the Adams family movies came out in the nineties, I loved them all over it and watched them eight billion times uh-huh. both um and i guess i watched now that you say it i haven't thought about it in a long time but i guess i did watch the cartoon um but i don't think too much so yeah. it's mainly the two 90s movies for me are like oh yes the adam's family i love this yeah 100 like, yeah i i love those movies mm-hmm. i have no idea how many times i've seen them i don't know they almost run together in my head yeah where i almost don't know what things happen in the first one what things happen in the second one well they're very similar it's not like for the second one they did like a huge departure i mean in, right. you know and so, obviously the plot's different and everything but they feel the same it feels like i don't know if they did made them like boom right one after another they feel like two parts of a whole thing yeah i totally agree yeah. um they're very much not mm-hmm. they were actually severely troubled productions Ooh, i don't necessarily interested yeah, to I, hear. Don't, I don't have like dish about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah it just seems like it was like nothing more so than just being like Barry Sonnenfeld, the director, really pulling his hair out, uh-huh. getting it done and stuff. And yeah. Like financial. Like time Nothing that's like stuff. really going to make you like be like, ooh. Wow. Yeah. It's not like Raul Julia and Angelica Houston actually hated each other or something. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't have anything like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, although bonus points for Adam's Family Values, the second mm-hmm. movie, they have the entire Turkey Day song and dance. Oh, absolutely. Wednesday and Pugsley go, to, Pugsley go to camp. So maybe that's also what put them in my head. That's true. Right. As you were saying it, that's what I was thinking that we got off that track. But yeah, it's it's a Thanksgiving classic in my mind, that yeah. whole part. Yeah. Oh. Pretty much I or somebody I know posts something from that Thanksgiving Day pageant every year. Yeah. And I realized um, that I, I, I was thinking about it. The Man. I wasn't even thinking about Adam's Family Values the day that I also wrote that on Instagram. I guess I just think about the Adam's Family or Adam's Family Values a lot. It's strange was, to me that, like, honestly, like what I said, like, they've been gone for a long time. Like, yeah. there's not a recent Adam's Family adaptation that you can really point to, but I right. still feel like I think about that movie a lot. I must, because I can picture, I remember I was walking the dog when I was doing this, and I was not doing it when I was thinking about it. Uh, Uncle Fester's O face. I was thinking about Becky Martin Granger, yeah. who is one of the camp director ladies, and I was like, "Huh, I wonder if I got any Kristen Rogers Anderson like name change inspo from Becky Martin Granger." Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It'd probably be deep in there, but the, uh, the parallel surface to me as I was walking, it made itself known. Sure, you're yeah. far more of a Wednesday though than a <laughs> Becky Martin Granger. I agree, and also thank you. Yeah, highest compliment. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, man, that scene where they're in the, they're like in the cabin and they're telling horror stories and they're like, Wednesday, it's your turn to tell a horror story. It's so good. She tells something about like all these like women doing stuff, going shopping, getting their hair done. Yeah. And over, but they were horrible to people. Right. And then overnight, all their original <laughs> noses grew back. Yeah. And everybody starts crying and screaming. Cause they're all like, <laughs> right. Know, I don't know. Uh, so anyway. Yeah. Uh, the cartoon was super popular. Uh-huh. Uh, evidently, it was like a real cultural icon of the age. Um, according to the Telegraph, the Adamses were one of the most iconic families in American history, hmm. right up there with the Kennedys. What? Wow. That's, I did not realize that. How crazy That's is cool. That? It's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, but it's wild. Uh, and then this is also a description that I, I really like. I kind of mm-hmm. said some of this stuff, but I really like the wording. It's very sweet. Yeah. I think the thing that like kept the, uh, the Adams family reverberating in my head more so than something like the Munsters mm-hmm. is like the Munsters was like broadly comedic. Yeah. The Adams family felt like it had like sort of a, there was like dark undertones and stuff. And yeah. certainly the, the, the glaze on it was all like dark and scary and right. wearing all black and having like monsters around like yeah. having animal heads on the wall that really roar. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. But, well, just listen to this. Yeah, the monsters didn't really do it for me. Uh, yeah. I like them fine, I guess, but I didn't watch them very much and definitely more than Adam's Family kind of gal. I know. Yeah, if we're yeah. having to choose sides. Yeah. yeah. I want to take a look at the monsters mm-hmm. uh, uh, at some point in the future. I would like to learn. Because I also watched a lot of the monsters. I didn't really. Oh, I definitely did. I mean, I definitely watched it, but I, I don't remember like anything about it. Yeah, I watched a ton of it. Yeah. Uh, but so here's the, the description from Wikipedia, which I really like. Mm-hmm. Although most of the humor derives from the fact that they share macabre interests, the Adamses are not evil. They are a close-knit extended family. Morticia is an exemplary mother, and she and jo- uh, Gomez, Gomez, 
remain passionate towards one another. <laughs> Understatement of the century. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> the parents are supportive of their children. The family is friendly and hospitable to visitors. In some cases, willing to donate large sums of money to causes. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. They do just like I forgot that that family is like insanely rich. That's part of the thing. They're absurdly rich. He's that's just right. like a vague investor. Yes, he just has family money. That's I guess. right. And people will hit them up, and he's like more than willing. And they think that they're gonna have to like do a whole song and dance and go mess. Like absolutely, here you go. I'll just write them a right. check. Yeah. Although he does make uh, that guy fence him for money in the oh, first yeah. movie. Really <laughs> well, that's yeah. just for his own sport. No one. I think ever. that check was always coming. Uh, maybe, maybe that's true. Yeah. yeah, he is a sportsman. Yeah. No one will ever be better than Raul Julia. Hell no. Being go- Gomez. Oh my god, he was perfect. Gomez. Yeah. Um, Jomez. but I like the description, the idea that like, it's almost, this is so weird. This, what I'm about to say sounds like propaganda. Uh-huh. Uh, it sounds to me like what people think the satanic church is versus what they actually, yeah, are. I get, no, I get what like you're they're not worshiping Satan and doing animal sacrifices. Right. It, to some extent, they're just kind of like dorks. Yeah, we're totally. Like, no, we're just trying to make a point or mm-hmm. whatever. And the, the Adams family are even less than that. They're just like, no, this is we're just, just doing our own thing and this, not thinking about you. Yeah. This is just yeah. what we're like, like deal with it or don't or get over it or be free out by us but whatever like we love each other and we're nice to people totally and i i i like that i feel like that's a really good like role model Mm -hmm. kind of to have yeah you're absolutely right uh so going through the family a little bit uh uh it's funny because a lot of who these characters are Mm -hmm. was uh more prominently defined by the original tv series in the comic strips they didn't even have names. Yeah. They were called the Adams Family, but you would look at these characters and see the one with the big bulbous nose who puts light bulbs in his mouth, or right. but he had no idea what his name was. Right, just a generic member of that family. Exactly. Uh, so um, Gomez, when it came time to give him a name, uh, Charles Adams had two ideas. One was Gomez mm-hmm. Adams, and the other was Rapelli. Oh, I'm glad he went Gomez. Isn't it interesting? Yeah. But even still, Repelli is from yeah. like Repel. Repellent. Yeah. Repellent. Yeah, right. Something like that. Right. And then ultimately he asked John Aston, the original actor who played Gomez in the show, what he wanted. In- oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, Gomez just sounds better. I get Repelli. It's I cool it. and everything. But Gomez Adams is a really good name. Repelli Adams like feels sillier. Yeah. No. Oh, 100%. There are a few things like that mm-hmm. with the names. Uh, but yeah, like Gomez is a, a supportive guy. Uh, he's very agile. Yes, uh, very. Wears a dark pinstripe suit and just has tons of money for an unknown reason. Yeah, really. He, uh, his wife is Morticia Adams, who is based on Charles Adams' first wife, Barbara. <laughs> awesome. She sounds sweet. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the description of her character, this is, this is something that I can like uh, clean up a little bit. But like in the description, they mention that her mother is Uncle Fester's sister. I don't know why you'd phrase it that way. Okay. Her which mother. Means that oh, okay. Uncle yeah. Fester is her mother's brother. Right. So Uncle Fester is her uncle. Yeah. Okay. That was the original idea. Interesting. And then it was cleaned up in some of the adaptations to say that Fester yeah. is Gomez's brother. Yeah. Gomez. Their relationship is so brotherly. I just can't accept it any other way. Out 100%. Um, Gomez had another brother. Yeah. Uh, early on named Pancho. Uh huh. That's a, that's a good name. Yeah. But it was Gomez, Fester, and Pancho. Well, it wasn't even Gomez, Fester, and Poncho. It was Gomez oh, and Poncho. Oh, it was that early. Okay, Gomez and, and Fester yeah. was Gomez's step-uncle? <laughs> Uncle-in-law? <laughs> don't know. I don't know what you call that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, according to Wednesday, Morticia applies baking powder to her face instead of makeup. Nice. It's just, uh, you know, white. Her name obviously comes from Mortician, Mm -hmm. which I think is really cool. Her family tree can be traced back to Salem, Massachusetts. Sweet. uh, And witchcraft is also implied at times in the series. Mm -hmm. For example, Morticia likes to smoke. Yeah. But she doesn't smoke cigarettes. Her body (laughs) emanates smoke. (laughs) Right. So she would be like, may I smoke? I love that. would say yes. And then just smoke would start pouring out of her. Yeah, it's amazing. Which is strange. Uh, Their child, Wednesday, uh, known for like her, her... Dark pigtails, uh, wearing like a black schoolgirl dress yep. kind of thing. Um, her name comes from a nursery rhyme. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Yeah. 
Um, I'm a Wednesday's child. Like in that nursery rhyme thing, I was born on a Wednesday. So I have a little cup that's like a baby commemorative cup that mom and dad either got or somebody gave them that looks like it'd be all nice. But then it says Wednesday's child is full of woe. Is that right? Yes. What 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 is the poem? Do you know the I don't know. I, no, not off the top of my head. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Let's yeah. just get that real quick. Because yeah. now I'm curious. Like, Yeah. Do you know what day of the week you were born? I don't, but we can find out. Yeah. I'm sure we can find out pretty easily. Uh here we go. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go. Yeah, everybody else is fine except for me. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child works hard for his living. And the child that is born on the Sabbath day is bonny and blithe and good and gay. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, so I drew the, the short straw. November 6th, 1986, day of the week. Let's see. There's Thursday. Thursday. So Thursday's child has far to go. Well, that's for sure. What do, what do you mean? <laughs> I don't even know what that would mean. That's meaningless. You've got, you've got a ways to go before Everybody you get there. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's useless. Yours Baloney. actually means something. Yeah, but it means I'm full of woe. Yeah. It means I'm depressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know it worked out uh-huh. okay. But that's messed up. It was, <laughs> this is Put upon me. Yeah, it was set in stone from the <laughs> <Yeah>. get-go. Um, <clears throat> Pugsley Adams. Uh, this is Charles Adams' description of his mm-hmm. character, of Pugsley. An energetic monster of a boy. It's awesome. Blonde red hair, popped blue eyes, and a dedicated troublemaker. In other words, the kid next door. <laughs> oh. Genius in his own way, he makes toy guillotines, full-size racks, Threatens to poison his sister, can turn himself into Mr. Hyde with an ordinary chemical set. That was, oh. seems to have been lost from his character. I was about to say. His voice is hoarse, is sometimes allowed an occasional cigar. That's right. I forgot that about <laughs> You remember that from the movie where he's just kind of like observing it. <laughs> yeah, he's like 10 years old. Oh, right. uh, it's so funny. It's great. Uh, when it came time to create the series and like flesh out the characters from the comic, uh, Charles Adams uh, was originally going to call him. Pubert. Oh, that's right. Well, Pubert comes up in the second movie. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Adam's family Finally. values. Yeah. Gomez and Morticia have another child. Mm-hmm. Pubert. It's a great name. Yeah. Uh, in most incarnations of the character, Pugsley has an unusual habit of stealing road signs. Oh. Which he uses to adorn the walls and door of his bedroom. Like you. Your little Pugsley. Didn't you steal a road sign? We had it in the garage, I think. I think mom bought that in the garage. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Mom's Pugsley. Yeah, mom is Pugsley. (laughs) Mom's a total Pugsley. (laughs) Like when people do sex in the city where they're like, I'm a Miranda. Yeah. Yeah. Mom's a Pugsley. Pugsley. (laughs) Sorry, mom. (laughs) Uh, Uncle Fester. Mm -hmm. Again, this is Charles uh, Adams' description of him. Uncle Fester is incorrigible. And except for the good nature of the family and the ignorance of the police, oh he would be under lock and key. Oh, my God. What has he done? He's done something wrong. <laughs> the eyes are pig-like and deeply embedded. God. He likes to fish, but usually employs dynamite. <laughs> to fish? Yeah. He keeps falcons on that... the roof. Does that not ring a bell? I can, I can picture that. Him him stick fishing a dynamite with, yeah, and, yeah, and the pool, the fish just come flying out of the water. Yeah, or just bubble up to the surface. He keeps a falcon on the roof, which he uses for hunting. His one costume, summer and winter, is a black great coat with an enormous collar. He is fat with pudgy little hands and feet. <laughs> Fester sounds sweet. Yeah, <laughs> bad ass. Seems like a good time. Um, Fester at times has severe migraines, but appears to enjoy them. <laughs> It's amazing. There's a lot of, of like pain is pleasure in the yeah. Adams family. Yeah. Oh, big strange. time. I watched a clip from a terrible movie called uh-huh. Adams Family Reunion. Was it with I French Stewart as um, Gomez? No. Is that a thing? I think so. There's somebody weird. It's Tim Curry. Tim Curry is Gomez? Yes. Yeah. Oh, what am I thinking of? You're thinking of either oh, Inspector Home Alone. Gadget 2 or Home Alone 4. I think I'm thinking of Home Alone. Where he plays Marv. Okay, but find... Okay. No, there's no there's no French Stewart Gomez Adams. Okay, okay. Not a thing. See you. Yeah. Um, but so in that movie, they uh, arrest Morticia. Yeah. And they put the handcuffs on her and she goes, tighter. 
I've, something like that happens in um, Adam's Family Values, too, because don't the police come to them for something? Oh, you know, I may think of, like, Debbie tying them up or something, and, and Morticia says something like that. Yeah. I don't remember what it is, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. she does. You're right. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very strange, and it's yes. subtle, Yes. but it's constantly there. Oh, it's absolutely constantly there. Like, people will, be, will try to be doing them injure, yes. like throwing knives at them or something. They're like, ooh. ooh. <laughs> like, they yeah, they're love it. they're intrigued by it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doing them injure, you know what I mean? Doing them I figured it out. Uh, Fester relieves his migraines by placing his head in a large screw press and tightening it to levels that most people would not be able to withstand. I've definitely wanted to do that. I've definitely pressed my hands against my head like I'm putting it into a vice. Yeah. At times, Fester uses the screw press on his head simply for enjoyment. (laughs) Again. Freak show. Again with their jollies. Freak show. In the original sitcom of the 60s, Fester is said to be Morticia's maternal uncle. But in all other filmed uh, and animated content, he is Gomez's brother. Yeah. Yeah. Good edit. Good edit. I think so, mm-hmm. too. Um, all right. Lurch. Yeah. Lurch is their butler. Uh, at any given moment, it seems in every room of the house, they have a rope they can pull. Uh, and then Lurch will appear saying, you rang. Yeah. Uh, it's unclear what he is or what's going on. All right. In some incarnations, he's said to be part Adams. Yeah, I feel like they've mentioned him as being a member of the family. Something Meaning that I watched. That yeah. One of the body parts he's made of is from an Adams. Because oh. he is supposed to be some sort of a Frankenstein's monster. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But yeah. I don't think that they ever really spotlight that because, again. None of these characters are really supposed to actually be creatures. Right. Which is also weird because they have a pet hand. Yeah, yeah. So there is supernatural stuff going on. But like Lurch, I always thought was a human who just happens to look. I mean, they have actors that look like that. Totally. That's, that's what I thought too. Actors. Yeah. So, hmm. you know. Interesting. But yeah, in some versions. Huh. Yeah. And they say he has two left feet, <laughs> which they mean literally. Right. <laughs> like Eugene Levy and Best in Show. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and in the new Adams Family series... A woman comments to Morticia about Lurch, where'd you dig him up? And Morticia says, funny, I can't remember which cemetery it was. <laughs> nice. Which I like. It's good. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, all right. So let's talk about some of the uh, the incarnations. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Uh, in 1964, there was the original live action series mm-hmm. uh, where John Aston played Gomez. He would play him like off and on for years, yep. even like in the most recent live action TV series. He showed up again as Grandpapa mm-hmm. Adams. Um, it ran only for two seasons, which yeah. is surprising for the the cultural impact it had. Yeah. But over the course of those two seasons, 64 episodes. Oh, oh my God. Those are packed seasons. Crazy. Yeah. Sometimes TV is just like that. Yeah, completely. Especially over the course of time. Yeah. I'm like in the modern age or somewhat recently, it used to be the norm to have 24 episodes a right. season. Now it's like 13. Right. And then it's sometimes like six. Yeah. It's Blackwood d- I think six. it just completely depends. Yeah. No, uh, I think it does. It doesn't look like there's a norm anymore, but you're right. I feel like it used to be more like 20 to 24. Yeah. Yep, more totally. recently, I mean. Uh, the show was produced by a guy named, named Nat Perrin. Okay. Good name. Uh, the thing is, he was close friends with Groucho Marx. Oh, okay. And he even wrote several Marx Brothers movies. Huh. Which is really interesting. Yeah. And so the show would do a lot of, well, it was a sitcom, right? So create a situation, see how it plays out. So a lot of the shows were stuff like Gomez the Politician. Right. The Adams Family in court. Yeah. But one time, one time, Kristen, William. they lampooned Beatlemania. Oh. In the episode Lurch, the Teenage Idol. Oh, what? Doesn't that make you want to watch it? Like right now? Yes, I do not think I've seen that one. Lurch, the Teenage Idol. Um, I wonder how that came about. I know. I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, Margaret Hamilton. Yeah. You know that is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah. Uh-huh. She was on the show. She played Mother Frump, Ooh. which I believe is Morticia's mother. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, right? Uh, and then eventually they did a, a reunion film after the show uh, ended. They did a, a movie, TV mm-hmm. movie, called Halloween with the New Adams Family, oh. which I was worried would have like other characters. But to say, them. why is it the New Adams Family? There's very little new about it. I think it was probably just in yeah. people to watch. There's yeah. people periodically throw the word. It's like a new word. episode of the Adams Family. Yeah. yeah. People will periodically throw the word new in with series, especially with the Adams Family, it seems. Weird. Uh, but yeah, here's the, here's the premise. Okay. Gomez and Morticia have had two more children, Wednesday Jr. and Pugsley Jr. That is funny. uh, Who strongly resemble their older siblings. (laughs) Gomez's brother, Pancho, is staying with the family while Gomez attends a lodge meeting in Tombstone, Arizona. 
Gomez is jealous of his brother, who once courted oh. uh, Morticia. Halloween is near, and Poncho tells the children. Poncho is a much less sexy name than Gomez. Poncho. So on that alone, I think Gomez could his mind could be at ease a little. Hi, Poncho. Hi, Poncho. Well, who knows what Morticia's up to, though? That's true. <laughs> she a freak. Yeah, she is. <laughs> um, Halloween is near, and Poncho tells the children the legend of the character of Cousin Shy. Oh. Who distributes gifts and carves pumpkins for good children on Halloween night. How good is that? That's Cousin awesome. Scary. I uh, love that. Wednesday, now called Wednesday Senior. Right. <laughs> of course. Is home from Music Academy where she is studying the piccolo. She breaks glass when she plays it. Pugsley, now called Pugsley Senior, is home from the Nairobi Medical School where he is training to be a witch doctor. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this sounds pretty good. Yeah. The, the family's home has been bugged. Uh, by a gang of crooks who intend to steal the family fortune. Ooh. Yeah. There's also a bit in there about trimming the uh, the scarecrow, like trimming the tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. like the idea of that. Yeah, I like do, too. Like having a scarecrow in your home for yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Very creepy. That sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, then there was the cartoon series, which was Hanna-Barbera. It's uh-huh. a spinoff of when they had the Scooby-Doo stuff I talked about in a previous episode where Scooby-Doo met the Adams Family. Then then they yeah. gave the Adams Family their own show. It was about uh, uh, the family being on a road trip across the country. They had mm-hmm. a Victorian-style camper. Yeah, that yeah. They traveled in, something like that. Uh, then the 1991 movie. So we jumped uh-huh. basically from 1973 yeah. to 1991. Wow, it's pretty crazy that there was such a spread between those things. I know. There are just gaps here. Yeah. It's weird. I wonder what sweet thing will be rebooted that we forgot about in like 10 or 20 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. What have we not mined yet? Yeah. What have we missed? Yeah. What, I guess we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I'd like to find some old monster, like something from the era of Dracula and Frankenstein, yeah. the novels. Yeah. Find some other contemporary novel that was... Like do as well. Right. And then make that totally sweet. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the 1991 movie directed by Barry Sonnenfeld starring Raul Julia, Angelica Houston and Christopher Lloyd. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing. Hell yeah. Uh, it is such a good movie. It feels like a Tim Burton movie. I believe it almost was. Yeah. Uh, until they had Barry Sonnenfeld. This is his first movie he ever directed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was incredibly troubled. He had a hard time getting it made. Um, they ended up going $5 million over budget. Oh, my God. And then the film company, Orion, who uh, they, they basically sold it while the production was still ongoing. Oh, wow. So it was finished under a different production house. I think Paramount. Oh, Did, did Danny Elfman do music for The Addams Family? I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, I don't know. I'll look it up. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but within the movie, like they made a bunch of additions to, mm-hmm. to the characters and stuff that I really like. Yeah. Uh, they say the family credo is, uh, I'm not going to pronounce the Latin, but it translates to, we gladly feast on those who would subdue us. Ooh, I want that to be our family credo. Right? That's sweet as hell. Isn't that awesome. But there's a, a super convoluted plot. The plot of the movie. No, he didn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the plot of the movie is that. Fester Adams has been missing mm-hmm. for decades. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Gomez misses him and has missed him all this time. They're brothers. Right. Uh, and then uh, uh, people want to steal the Adams family money and they realize that their adopted son looks a lot like Fester. <laughs> that, that's lucky. So they tried to pass off this fake Fester as the real Fester to try to get access to the money, and then they found out Fester was the older brother, not the younger, so he's the rightful heir to the money in the first place. Right. So they try to steal it, and then Fester decides he likes the Adams more than his family, and he turns on them. Well, his mom is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> She's yes. terrible and creepy. She yells at him. She calls him Gordon. Yeah. She tell, says that he's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, and then he decides that he's an Adams instead. Right. So he chooses to be an Adams, basically. Right. Uh, and then he defeats the bad guys get struck by lightning and it's revealed in like the last five minutes of the movie that he actually is Fester Adams. Yeah. What, always what was, was he? He was like on a boat or something like that? He was traveling <laughs> the Bermuda Triangle right. and he got amnesia. Right. That's what happens in that movie. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> the movie kicks ass. It got it. It got sort of average reviews mm-hmm. but it did super well. Like it earned Do you mean back- an average of awesome reviews? Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, did, it did super well at the box office. It just earned a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, it went up against Hook. Oh, ri- Spielberg. oh my God. What a time to be alive. It's strange, right? Man, the yeah. Mamushka versus Rufio. Yeah. Yeah. An all around Wushka. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it did, it did so well that it like kickstarted like a new era of Adam's family. So in 1992, there was a cartoon series mm-hmm. ran for two seasons. Uh, it seems like every episode, it was almost them fighting villains, which is odd. Huh. Weird. Uh, but then in, uh, the most recurring villain was an underwear obsessed family called the Norman Myers. What the hell? 
underwear obsessed. I deliberately chose to not learn any more than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That's weird. Uh, and then I like the way that this was written. Yeah. Uh, the way the show would typically end. Uh-huh. At the end of several episodes, when the conflict was resolved, Gomez usually suggested a family <laughs> dance. The first suggestion for the dance was usually thrown out because of some weird requirement. Oh, my God. It's like, we need to get blah, blah, blah. And they just couldn't get their hands on it. So they'd be like, I know what we should do. We should do the Walu. Yeah. I will need blood. You know, yeah, yeah. Procured under the moonlight and a frozen fish. <laughs> yeah. And the professor would be like, I don't think we could do <laughs> yeah. that. And be like, all right, well, then we'll do the twist. <laughs> right. And then they would do the twist. That's how every that's how every single episode ended. What a weird show. So every episode they're fighting a villain and every episode they want to do a dance and then don't. People like formula. I yeah. Mean, I guess it works. Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, there's the sequel to the movie of that course. came out in 1993. Adam's Family Values. Yep. Better reviewed than the first. Yeah. I mean, hard to say. I love them both. But I would say that Adam's Family Values may eke out at the Adam's Family, the first one. I think it absolutely does. Yeah. Now you've also got uh, Carol Kane oh, playing yeah. Grandmama, which yep. is uh, an upgrade, I think. Big time. Um, uh, Morticia. A dentist. <laughs> <laughs> what does the baby have? What's the illness? Uh, Let me find that out. Yeah, I don't quick. remember. So they have a baby, and it just looks like a normal human. Like, it's not all Adam's family E. And they're alarmed. Yeah, they're it. very upset. And grandma is saying, or grandma is like, it'll be okay. Yeah. Or no, no, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe she's like worried. She's like, we have to undo this, or else he could be something. President. And they're like, mama, no. And no. she goes, a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, meanwhile, Uncle Fester starts dating a lady named Debbie. Yeah. Played by Joan Cusack. Joan Cusack in a rare for Joan Cusack femme fatale hottie role. Yeah. Playing she doesn't like get a that a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Happy uh, to see her that way. And she woos him. She takes him away. So it's almost the inverse of the first movie where mm-hmm. it's like they're trying to secretly shove Fester into the family. Now there's somebody who's threatening to take him away. Yeah. She wants his money. It's like center around what Fester is doing. <laughs> Would you really think that Uncle Fester would be basically... He does seem like an unlikely the hero. The fulcrum of those yeah, stories. Yeah, fulcrum, thank you, yeah. Very odd. Very. Uh, and so Debbie essentially uh, is first in there as like an au pair. Yeah. And has Pugsley and Wednesday sent away to a summer camp where like a bunch of like normal kids right. doing annoying stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, Camp Chippewa. Yep, Camp, camp Chippewa. Chippewa. I also can't figure out what the name of the illness was that Pubert had. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it's somewhat relevant because the illness will come back in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, why don't you talk and then I'll see if I can find something. Okay, cool. Uh, so I uh, I love this movie. There's also a very weird thing in it about, um, about uh, I don't know what it's called when you kill your husband. Oh, uh, I don't remember. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Debbie is essentially a black widow. Yeah. She uh, finds men, seduces them to be her husbands, and then kills them for their money. But you can't kill Fester. So she tries right. to, like, electrocute him in the bathtub, and he survives. And he's got that <laughs> light bulb in his mouth again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing that. Um, it's his party trick. And meanwhile, uh, uh, what's her face? Wednesday ends up meeting Dave Crumholtz <laughs> right. at Camp Chippewa, who plays Joel Glicker. He's yeah. just like a normal dorky kid. He has bad allergies. And by the end of the movie, they're almost married. Yeah. They're like 12 or something. <laughs> no, they seem committed for life. And he has a, and a he looks like Gomez. mustache yeah. like Gomez. Uh, and he like pledges his life to her and I think she kills him. Yeah, she does. She like electrocutes him. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But I think not really. I think she like, I don't think he dies. I think she does something to him and he like lives and he's going to stay with her. I think she's like, yeah, this is how we do it. This is just how it's done. Yeah. Right. There's, this there's how my family rolls that I love about those movies where they'll, you know, talk about. Oh, oh, oh. Well, in that same movie, yeah. uh, when Fester proposes to Debbie, she comes in and she's like, I've got a ring or whatever. And they go, wasn't that your mother's? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Raul Julie goes, it was. <laughs> she was buried with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Debbie's holding a shovel. Yeah. So ironically, she fits in with the Adams. Right. Bit. Honestly, they're like, ah, Debbie, she's one of us. Yes. You know, she's gone too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Until she turns and she starts trying to, you know, corrupt Fester. Right. And then, no, they even they kind of talk about her kind of like 
like looking back after she's dead they're like ah debbie just like another like weird like branch of our messed up family well, tree gomez is upset though because he yeah. goes, he's like she's taken him twisted my brother he is mr debbie yeah remember yes so no i remember no, but, no in the end though when debbie is gone and everything uh, when she's turned into a pile of ash yes they talk about her like oh and debbie or whatever because <laughs> she's like just messed up and they're into messed up stuff i just want to interject real quick i can't find the name of whatever pubert's problem is but i'd like to point out two things that are funny <laughs> gomez says that pubert had too much fun at fester and debbie's wedding i guess that he got wasted or something <laughs> and also pubert shoots a flaming arrow at debbie yes he does this is a full on baby. This is this it's a great movie. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's a great movie. Yep. He ends up saving the day, Pubert. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. He thwarts that her. That would really be like a jump the shark moment to add <laughs> another child to the Adams family. Oh, it works beautifully. Pubert worked wonderfully. I would only hope that he doesn't age or something. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Yes. Like with like inexplicably he's always a baby. Yeah, totally. But he's dropped. He doesn't show up in any future media. Damn. When, well, Wednesday and Pugly are always trying to kill him. Maybe they somehow did it. That's right. They, they try to put him in a guillotine and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And he like rolls out on a skateboard, I think. Yeah. Well, Pugsley's got his guillotines. He makes them. Yeah. And Wednesday's favorite doll is her Marie Antoinette doll. <laughs> right. Which Pugsley chops the head off. Yeah. At her request. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how they play. Yeah. It's so good. It's great. Even even just the plot of that second movie when Debbie oh, yeah. was like revealing her like master plan and like the fact that she was just like a spoiled like poor little rich girl kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where uh, she wanted a certain Barbie. Malibu Barbie. They get her the wrong one. <laughs> and she's she's like ranting and raving in yeah. front of the Adams. And every time she like pauses, more she will go like the horror. Yeah. <laughs> insanity <laughs> it's so good it makes me want to watch it oh, angelica houston oh she's amazing really, i honestly, love that, her that, that that little trio oh angelica yeah houston as morticia uh-huh raul julia as gomez yeah and uh uh christopher lloyd as uncle fester absolutely Come. what a holy trinity seriously it's the perfect casting so they're good. all so perfect even christina ricci is amazing oh as yeah Wednesday. Th those those movies are really oh i love them like special yeah and i love they the idea are. that they've got the big cemetery in the backyard yep. i think it's consistent in all the media that the adams family house which is a very iconic looking big scary old victorian home yeah all of this by the way based on new jersey Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charles Adams lived in, I think, in Westfield. Uh huh. Uh, and there's an Adams Family Museum there. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. We should go. What we the could hell? Go. There's nothing stopping us. Um, but yeah, no, like he, like a lot of old style Victorian homes around yeah. that area. We yeah, that go. makes total sense. I can't believe there's an Adams Family Museum. Yeah, we should go. We should do a little video from there. Or yeah, we should. Yeah. Holy crap! How long have you known about that for? A long time. What? How have I never heard this? Like All right, we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> My mind is blown. I can't believe I've never heard of that before. Uh, anyway, a little Easter egg in this movie, yeah. a hot debate that Krista and I have had about this movie. Uh, Nathan Lane oh, God. shows up playing a police officer. Right. Lowest billing possible. I think that, William, I think that you just said it right there. You slipped. He shows up playing a police officer. Well, so what? Bruce he Campbell shows up in Spider-Man no. playing a wrestling promoter. It wasn't just a gig for him. It was a cameo. All right. All right. Question of the week, well, anyway. everybody. Is Nathan Lane's role in Adam's Family a cameo or just a job that he was lucky to get? Mm -hmm. The other thing that I'll submit is that there's an Adam's Family Broadway show on which yeah. Nathan Lane plays Gomez. Yeah, right, but I don't think that I don't think that has any bearing on what kind of role he played in Adam's Family Values. That is a working actor taking a gig. That is not the producers of the Adam's Family movies calling Nathan Lane and being like, "We would love if you did like a fun cameo in this." I think he First must of all, have been. I don't think it happened as much. The theater scene. I don't think. But the Adams Family movies don't have anything to do with the theater scene at that Unless time. Unless he had connections and they were like, my buddy Nathan Lane, who's huge, has agreed to do this little role. It's just a fun thing. There's absolutely no way. He's got no a way. character. You know, like, he, he, like, remember he's like, he's no. the cop that's going like, you're driving me nuts. William, so I know that. a broad role. Yeah, but I think they're just like, oh, great. We found the perfect guy for this role. He's really going to bring something to this small part. There's absolutely no way. He was not like a big famous actor who'd be like a coup to get at that time. Within a year or two, he was a complete explosion. Yeah. I have to imagine it's A couple of years nowhere. after. Yeah, I have to imagine it didn't come from nowhere. Okay, so then even then by that logic, you're saying that this role springboarded him into fame. No. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's absolutely not a cameo. It makes sense. No. Stay in your lane. You're just Nathan. looking. You're just looking back in history at a famous person, and imagining that they were famous at that time. I've had it up to here. 
<laughs> I've had enough. Well, bring it on up here because I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's go time. Let's go. All right, I'm going to wrap this up because all the stuff after the movies is not nearly as exciting. No, we think not. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, they then made, uh, so that was like 93. By the yeah. way, Adam's Family Values is the final movie that Raul Julia made. Uh huh. Caveat, which was released while he was still alive. Okay, yeah, because Street so Fighter, right? Is yes, like that's yeah. his final movie, but yeah. this is the final time that he got to like be enjoy. part of the movie and like mm-hmm. enjoy the success. That's cool. It's and a good one for it. It was a total critical success. Yeah, totally total critical success. People love these movies, I, I, and rightly yeah. so. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and he's amazing in them. Uh, I love Raul Julia. I think rightly the the studio realized there's not really anywhere to go. With yeah, it. you can't really recast him totally and keep it in the same thing. So they yeah. kind of. Passed I'm surprised on. they didn't call on Nathan Lane since he was oh, so obviously great in it. Up. Are you gonna do this again? <laughs> I'm ready to do it until you submit. There's always an argument in the family around Thanksgiving. <laughs> Here we go. Must be awkward on Thursday. A classic. Go ahead. Keep going. All right. So uh, uh, at the same time, there was a company called Saban who wanted to do another live action TV series. Okay. And to kick it off, they wanted to do a, like a two hour movie with mm-hmm. it. Uh, and so enter the movie Adam's Family Reunion. Yeah. Which kind of tries to ape the movie style. So it almost acts as a third in the franchise while also being the pilot episode, quote unquote, of a new live action series. Okay. So it has a foot in both worlds. Yeah, weird. Uh, it is n- neither fish nor fowl. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was not a good phrase. It was not very uh, well successful. Yeah. Uh, discovering that his grandparents have de- developed Alzheimer's disease. What? What is a disease that is slowly turning them normal? Gomez organizes a family reunion, hoping that some branch of his enormous family tree will find a cure. Unfortunately, the company arranges arranging it misspells the surname and reunites him with the Adams family with one D. Oh, just name. normal Adams instead. Uh, including a Dr. Philip Adams who plans to poison his father oh. and rearrange his will. Um, poison his own father, Dr. Philip Adams? Like, yeah. it's just a side story that they stumble into. Got it. I think so. Uh, Gomez hopes that Dr. Adams can cure his grandparents. Uh, Morticia spends time with the women. Fester and Thing do their best to capture Butcher, a mutated puppy who feeds on human hair. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Wednesday and I like Puck the feeding on human hair part. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, aside from the idea that Tim Curry is Gomez, which that's is great, great casting. It's great casting. Uh, mm, yeah, no one else really. Yeah, plus especially having anyone else do. Fester. Is it like Daryl Hannah or something? Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, As Morticia. Yep. Uh, Lurch falls in love. Okay, I'm weirdly bored just hearing about I it. I know. It's it's not good. Yeah. I remember trying to watch it a bunch when it came out because like I will aggressively I've leave. seen the cover. I don't think I've ever actually even oh, tried to I've watch it. it. Several times. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> because like I, I get so obsessed with like a franchise. Like yeah. I need to I need the whole thing. I need yeah. to love the whole thing. Right. Or have none of it. I'm yeah. very, too like I go to extremes. Yeah. Something's either garbage or it's the best thing ever. Right. And unfortunately I just couldn't make it work. Yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't a good <laughs> Couldn't hack it. Uh, but that essentially kicked off the live action series which was called the new adams family mm-hmm. uh different guy plays gomez it wasn't tim curry yeah the different people across the board yeah uh, i forgot that that's a thing yeah the 65 episodes only one season what what channel was that on do you know yeah it was on it was on like was one it of those network ABC family type yeah yeah, yeah. weird huh yeah. Okay. That no, wasn't good. Yeah, it doesn't seem like I totally forgot that, that exists. Yeah, 100%. That was 1998. Yeah. Nothing ever since. Hmm. Aside from like a Broadway play. Yeah. With Nathan Lane. Yeah. Right. But, Doing a role after he'd become famous. Well, right. Well. Anyway. So, or reprising. Repri- no, he. <laughs> how is that reprising? William, move on. I'm right. Someone do the work. Step off or move on. So, uh, we're going to move on in just a second, but I do want to say that the future yeah. is potentially bright. Oh, for the Adams or family. dark. Well, That's how they yeah. like it. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, because there are plans for a new movie. Oh, it's going to okay. be an animated feature. It's coming okay. out next year. Okay. Uh, let's see if some of these names. You know, are what? I'll be too. ready for like a live action movie. I'm curious. I would prefer a when live you said movie. animated just now. I went. Eh. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't. I straight up don't like the art style of the original cartoons. Yeah. I like. I like Gomez to be tall. And yeah. Lean I want to see these pe- and intimidating. Right. Like the original art, he's kind of like wide and pudgy and. Oh, I can picture it now that you say that. That's right. He's kind of a rectangle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of a rectangle. Mm -hmm. Like, Fester has, like, a big nose. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to make Fester annoying. Yeah, totally. Christopher Lloyd is creepy. He brought a level of nuance to the piece that really made it sing. He did. I agree. (laughs) 
Uh, but some of these names are very encouraging. Okay. Oscar Isaac as Gomez. Okay. Oh, that makes total sense. But live. But has action. it live? I, li- I, know. I, know. I know. Charlize Theron. That also as makes Morticia. total sense. Wonderful. Wonderful. Chloe Grace Moretz as Wednesday. I'm not nuts about her. Really? Yeah. I like her. I like her fine. She was great on uh, 30 Rock where she was Jack Donaghy's conniving. Like I remember niece. her being on it, but I don't remember that much about her. Yeah. Finn Wolfhard as Wednesday. As Pugsley? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pugsley. yeah, yeah. From Stranger Things. Okay. Great. Yeah. Great. Good. Spooky uh, kid. Uh, Nick Kroll, I believe, is Lurch. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I want to say. Maybe he's Fester. I don't know. I only wrote down the names. Nick Kroll's in there. Okay. Okay. I like Nick Kroll. Bette Midler is Grandmama. <laughs> okay. And Allison Janney's going to play some sense. sort of a villain thing, I think. That's a great cast. It's a great cast. Huh. Great cast. Awesome. So 2019 Damn, I wish that it was Adams real. Family. Yeah. I know. I wish it was live action. Yeah, I'd but, like to uh, see that. But at least it lives on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. Maybe it'll leave. I mean, maybe in another 20 years, it'll be live action. Yeah. Who's to say? And I'll be Maybe dead. a young Gomez is being born right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a young fester. Yeah. I hope my kid grows up to be fester. <laughs> well, he's a nice guy. He ends up being very happy with um uh, it means to rot. What is it? Um, well no, fester means to rot. Oh, right, right. But her like what's name her name? Means insanity. Is it dementia? What is her name? <laughs> Demen- oh my gosh, it is dementia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my name's dementia. It means insanity. Yeah. And he loves Oh it. yeah, and he goes, My name's Fester. It means to rot. Means to he's like rot. really smiling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's I a got them mixed up. Fester and uh, and uh, and Gomez are trying to romance uh-huh. uh, Debbie and Morticia, right? And you know, Gomez oh my is God. going on and on, being like, "We don't deserve these divine creatures. Yeah. We do not deserve to be in their presence." And yeah. Fester goes, "Yeah, <laughs> we deserve ugly, ugly girls. girls." Yeah. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. And then he puts breadsticks in his nose. Yeah, he pretends to be a walrus. Yeah, and she loves it. She fake. loves it. Yeah. Pretends to love it. And yeah. then he doesn't know what else to do. And the second she looks back, he frantically goes to put it back in his yeah, nose. Yeah, just does it again. Hoping to recapture the magic when he did it the first time. Oh, it's so good. And it Wednesday really collects those serial killer trading yep. cards, which is really ahead of the true crime boom. Yes, totally. Yeah, I think that like she has Lorraine, and they're like very nineties, like of the time references, like Lorraine Bobbitt. Lorraine Bobbitt. Uh, like maybe um, who's Joey Joey Buttafuoco's? Yeah. Um. Oh no, no, God, no. I'm having a total brain Linda fart. Linda Buttafuoco. No, no, I almost. Oh God. What is her name? Amy Fisher. Amy Fisher. I think Pugsley wants to trade for Amy Fisher. Amy Fisher. Yeah, because yeah. he goes it's like Amy, Amy Fisher. Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> Those, those movies are great. Oh, they really are. Uh, it's time for a rewatching. Yeah. Um, so there you have it. Cool. The Adams family. Cool. Kristen. Da-na-na-na. Yeah. They do what they want to do. Think what they want to think. I da-na-na-na-na. remember. They put a lot of rap in those movies, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too legit. And also, I hate that um, then MC Hammer put his own song in it. Like It's, it's like Adams, and he goes, Too legit. Adams, too legit. What? Like, too legit to quit. Really? Yeah. There was also a Michael... He's trying to do some cross-promotion that I don't care for. Michael Jackson also wrote music for one of them. Really? But it was around the time that one of his scandals came out, and they pulled oh. it. Oh, But evidently, you can find it online. I have not heard it. Oh, weird. Yeah. I remember that our nephew, Robbie, loved the MC Hammer um, Adams Family theme. So I remember watching it over at Karen and Bill's house one really? time, and Robbie was, like, really little, and he started, like, bopping, and we were like, oh, because he was, like, a little kid, so yeah. we, like, played it again. It was really oh, cute. Good. All kids should be raised listening to oh, totally. Adams Family music and <laughs> they're, stuff. They're yeah. doing it right. It's right. It's great. I love it. All right, Will. So my topic tonight comes with some inspiration from one of our listeners who got in contact with us. Okay. So this is from Marshall. Thank you so much, Marshall. He sent us a message through Facebook and said a lot of really, really nice complimentary things about the show and also mentioned some things that he would love to hear about. Yeah, yeah. And one of them was the idea of people selling their souls to the devil. Ooh. So like kind of not exactly Satan worshipers, but just that aspect of it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I love that. Like Guy from Rosemary's Mm -hmm. Baby. Yeah. Exactly. Selling his soul to the devil in exchange Mm -hmm. for fame and fortune. Right. So what I found is that, like Guy, most stories of selling your soul to the devil are in exchange for something that's like kind of surfacey like that. So maybe it's like ultimate knowledge, power, fame, and fortune, like kind of crap like that. Yeah. And so I wonder. Crap like that. Well, no, it's not like I want true love. It's like I want power. I want to know the most. I want whatever. So I wonder if the devil 
is especially happy to make deals with those kinds of people because they're the exact kind of like corrupt, crappy souls that he wants inhabiting his underworld. Yeah. Because they're obviously prioritizing the wrong things in life, yeah, which the devil the would love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So culturally, um, making deals with the devil has popped up a ton of places, but it's mainly native to Christian traditions, which is not surprising. Right. Um, and maybe like the oldest and or one of the most famous stories is about Faust. Um, wanting to sell his soul to the devil and Miss Mephistopheles right. being an agent of the devil coming down to yeah. take it. I believe so, we all know the story of Gotas Faust. Oh, absolutely we do. I didn't. Um, I mean, I'd heard of it. <laughs> you, you've heard of making it like a Faustian deal. Yeah, Faustian I knew what that bargain. meant, but yeah. I didn't really know the, no, when, the story. Uh, when Gota uh, wrote it... Um, <laughs> it's one of the few Anymore? things I remember from college yeah. is Gotas Faust. <laughs> Gotas Faust. Gota. Oh, I'm well, Gota. Why did you hear my newest tale? It's about Faust. He, he really a, gets in a bit of trouble. In my newest tale, someone makes a Faustian bargain. <laughs> we haven't heard the story yet. That reference doesn't make sense. It will. Don't worry, just wait. <laughs> so there are a couple different versions of Faust's story, I guess, because that one like really took off and then people started playing with it. Yeah. So basically, it's this guy who's super smart and stuff, and he's very successful, but he's still unsatisfied. And after trying to kill himself, makes a plea to the <laughs> devil to give him like ultimate knowledge and fulfill all of his desires or something so he can finally be happy and the devil is like yeah great if you give me your soul and faust goes for it so then he um seduces a young lady she gets pregnant but because it's out of wedlock she drowns the child then she gets convicted of murder and she goes to jail but actually she ends up going to heaven in the end because she was innocent she was an innocent soul who kind of got caught up in all this and he's just miserable anyway so he's made this deal with the devil but his life turned out really crappy because of it and so it didn't really work anyway right and when his life ends he gets dragged to hell um, but there's another version, which maybe is the Gota version, I'm not really sure, um, where he is saved by God because of his constant striving and basically like the lady who he had had to be with had like put in a good word for him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a real I know. up. Humdinger. Yeah. Um, Do whatever you want. <laughs> sure, sell, your, sell your soul to the devil. Yeah, exactly. Okay. God will come in and save you because you've been striving. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so basically it's usually that somebody is asking either Satan or one of his minions for something. Um, but also sometimes the deal is struck just as a way to acknowledge the devil. So more of a sort of general thing where it's not, not they want something specific. They're like, I know that there's a devil. I know that he's very powerful. So I kind of want to get in his good side. So like, yeah, here's my soul. Um, if you want to give me a leg up here and there, like, that'd be cool. <laughs> That's a terrible bargain. Isn't that a stupid plan? Like already giving the most valuable thing you have. Right. So that maybe your life will be a little bit better. Yeah. It's just kind of like hedging your bets with very big yeah, stakes. If anybody wants to like buddy up to me by giving me all your money. Right. Like just in sure. case that could be helpful. Yeah, whatever. It might, it might work. It might not. Right. But, uh, but at, at least you feel like you've done something. Yeah, absolutely. So it's usually made in a moment of desperation and it's almost always framed as dangerous to be doing so. And this is a quote from the Wikipedia that I thought was really awesome. As the price of the fiend's service is the wagerer's soul. Ooh, I love that. Right? The fiend. That yeah. Fiend, is fiend the capitalized? Fiend. It should be. Uh, it may have been. Not price sure. Price. I don't think so. Fiend's service. Yeah. Yeah, like the, a name for the devil as the fiend. It also I don't think like, that that's how they phrase it. But. Like, a, you know, like a Jack Torrance in The Shining Man. Like, mm. I'd give my soul for a nice bourbon. Yeah, I would love a nice I would love it. I lost the threat. All right. I just wanted to do that voice. And it's like the implication is like, who do I have to sell my soul around here to for a nice bourbon? Yeah. How was that? That's that's good. Oh, that, I forgot how I wanted to start this segment. I was going to say, William, have you ever danced with the devil by the pale moonlight? Really? Damn it. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, why? Does that really? I, I don't know. I don't, just cool. Yeah, it's just cool. I feel like dancing with the devil is kind of about like, like making a deal side. with the devil so it sort of works. It's yeah. not something I found in my research, but something that this old noggin right. put together. Hey, if I dance with you, will you make me rich and powerful? Yeah. I guess that's basically the thing. It's like no. you're in league. You're dancing with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you do have a lovely two-step. I don't know. No. <laughs> All right. Bye. Then I guess we're not dancing. Bye-bye. 
<laughs> so it's sometimes kind of a moral tale. So something interesting I'm going to get to a little bit. When I was doing research, it was a little confusing to me through a couple of sources whether the person who was talking about the idea of making a deal with the devil was being like, um, or the website or whatever I was reading was talking about it through the lens of like stories about the devil or whether they were saying when people make deals with the devil. Right, as so a it's fact. a little wishy-washy and sure. I'll talk about it in a minute. But basically, um, in story time, talking about dealing uh dealing with the devil so sometimes it's kind of a moral tale where the person has a horrible eternal damnation and you're kind of like see that's what's going to happen if you mess with the devil or you do bad things um and sometimes the person tries to outwit the devil and it might seem like they got away with it but then in the end the devil still gets them so you should still just not mess with them like you're not going to be able to escape this i I like like that that. too um occasionally it's a funny story where someone does outwit the devil on a dumb technicality so um i don't know it'd be something like ha you said that you would have you know my soul forever but forever is really just a construct right and the devil's like no it does ring a bell like i feel like <laughs> yeah. i can think of of stories like that where it's like mm-hmm. but you find a way for the devil to yeah. not be able to set foot on there's Earth a loophole or right yeah, yeah right like that um so in these stories and again maybe in what they're saying people do sometimes the devil demands something else like a promise to kill children offer your child's soul to satan kind of like rosemary's baby offer the child to satan um or uh consecrate them to satan right when they're born (laughs) so i guess that that means like immediately baptize them yes basically to satan right upside down cross Mm -hmm, probably um and apparently in the Middle Ages, there were a lot of midwives who were accused of being in league with the devil because there were a lot of women who had babies who died in childbirth. Right. And then people would say that the midwives gave that soul to the devil. What a horrible Isn't one that terrifying? Punch of misery. Oh, completely. Why would you do well, that? Well, not to, to the mother. It, it would be that the midwife did it. Like, but I mean, it's it's still horrendous. What I'm saying it's not like they're saying the mother. I mean, okay. maybe they did sometime. I don't, yeah, know. I don't know. But yeah, just like what a weird time where everything is kind of like traced back to. Yeah, can you not make a thing right now? Right, uh, uh, Gary. <laughs> right. Like I'm dealing with like the the misery right now. Do you really need to make like a whole show and yeah. a whole thing to like burn this? Lady? Right, right, exactly. Or just the woman, who, women who've been caring for this lady. Yeah, can like you leave us alone. How it's... about this has nothing to do with you? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. How about butt out? Get out of my hut. Yeah, <laughs> ass. So a little bit of a very get out of my house, you horses ass. What is that from? What is that from? I, horses, horses ass, ass rings a bell to me, but not get out of my house, you horses ass. It's not get out of my house, you horses ass, but I think it's Jeffrey Tambor. It's some oh, it is yeah, barely restrained rage. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um. So the pact with the devil that you have traditionally can either be spoken or written. So oral pacts could have an appeal because you do it by invocation. Mm -hmm. So you're saying spells or rituals or something, and then you feel the devil's presence. However, it is said that there is a mark left on you from where the devil has touched you to seal the pact. Ah. So even if there's not like a contract in writing somebody could find, there's a mark on your body that tells the tale. I like that. Yeah. Um, Written pacts are often written in the person's blood who's kind of kicking off the whole thing or wikipedia says quote simply signing your name into satan's red book oh of course not clickable or anything <laughs> so satan's red book simply signing your name satan's, satan's red, red book, book. Well, that's um, a black phillips ledger yeah right, exactly yeah. yeah um so there was also something in wikipedia that said that you know if it's not satan you're dealing with and you're dealing with one of his minions that different demons each have a specific month day of the month an hour to be called that is specific to what their purpose is so depending on the pact that you're trying to set like if you're trying to get fame there's the fame demon you're trying to get the power there's a the power demon you need to do it at the right time i like that 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 raises an interesting question. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times people have like the God of the sun, the God of dreams, whatever. Mm-hmm. Is there a comparable devil to each of those? It sounds gods? like that's what they're saying. I like that. I know. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Well, I guess there's Loki. Dirt devil. You know? Ooh, love him. Well, but they just say that Loki is the God of mischief. But so that's what I'm saying. Of, good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, well, I'm saying of like blank. there's a sun, a sun God yeah. and a sun devil. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Like that, that would be interesting. But even though they say Loki is a god of mischief, I feel like he's more devilish. I feel like God in that instance is really just kind of like denoting a being. people, a, a, yeah, a being of another realm or whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like he's part of the demon crowd, Loki. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. He'd be one of them. 
So if you're trying to like do a pact so you have a lot of mischief in your life, that's who you'd be calling is is Loki. Yeah, yeah. I want to have like, a mischievous life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've seen the movie Son of the Mask, you really know what he's capable of. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so let me see what. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, so it seems to me like as I'm talking about, you know, whether when I was reading about this, if it had to do with things that we're just saying have been written or if we're saying that these are things that people do in real life. It seems like with like with a lot of things, because it was written about, um, maybe people kind of took that as inspiration and decided to take the very thing that people were slandering them with. Like yeah. people who are like, you're a witch. Maybe, maybe for some people it was like, you know, if you think I'm a witch, I'm going to be a witchy anyway. And then maybe it got pa- like passed down lineage. So maybe it is that real people did some of, some of this yeah. kind of stuff. Um, so... It could be that. It could be that they did this stuff that they had been accused of to turn it into power by using it themselves and then genuinely or kind of sub- symbolically as just like a rebellious empowering act. They're like, yeah, I'm taking this on and I'm making it like a thing that works for me now. Right. So who knows how or if the deal with the devil thing is a thing that people have really done in a genuine way. That's right. like I'm actually trying to do this or if maybe some people did because they're just like – well, I'm just going to take on what you've said about me yeah. and make it my thing. You're saying that I sold my soul to the devil? All right. Mm-hmm. Guess what? That was a <laughs> – now see what I can really do Yeah, I embrace that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or just kind of like a way to like accept themselves in a way. Like if you're saying all this crappy stuff about me, maybe I can take what you're saying and turn it on its head as kind of like – like almost an affirmative act where it's like, fine, they can say this about me and I can do it and right. I can feel good about myself anyway. Like even if I were to do this, that doesn't make me whatever bad thing you're saying yeah, I am. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to call out some story about famous people who have been said to have made a deal with the devil. Yeah. So there are a lot of them. I definitely would like to do an episode another time that's kind of about like the whole crazy Illuminati Satanism rumors with like Jay-Z, Kanye West, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, all that stuff. Hell yeah. So I'm leaving that out of here just yeah. in case you guys are listening. And you're like, but what about that? That is so its own thing that I want to do at another time. But there are a couple of really cool stories. So I did not know about this guy named Robert Johnson, um, except that when I read about his story, I realized that they had covered it on Supernatural. Okay. So <laughs> Robert Johnson was like a really incredible guitar player, apparently. And it's said that he was told to head to a crossroads where he met with the devil who tuned his guitar and taught him how to play the blues, which is Awesome. <laughs> That's a real thing of the devil being musically yes. inclined. Yes. Yeah. The devil really knows how to shred. Well, the six the six string guitar is right. for the six fingered hand. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's awesome. And of course, there's that Garth Brooks sketch on SNL. Oh my God, that's right. <laughs> where he wishes that he could write a, a song, a hit song, and then Will Ferrell as the devil shows up wearing ridiculous devil makeup. And yeah. Ha ha ha! You have summoned me. <laughs> yeah. Like speaks in a crazy devil talking. He's like, and his songs suck. Yeah, he goes, feast your ears on this tasty lick. <laughs> like, I remember one is like, on the highway, on the byway, Mr. Robotron. <laughs> and he's like, the hell was that? That stinks. <laughs> like, if you didn't like that one, then sample this one for size. Yeah. Uh, it's just another garbage song. And then the sketch ends mm-hmm. with. Garth Brooks never liking any song the devil suggested. Oh, I remember to him. how the sentence, yeah. And the devil's like, all right, well, uh, I guess I'll leave then. And really he goes out. Walking out of the room and he goes, what? Did you say something? Yeah. Garth Brooks is like, no, like, just leave. Basically. Go right ahead. And then Garth Brooks sits there for a second and you can tell that he suggested this to the writers mm-hmm. as a good way to end. Because it's so rather weird. Rather than a comedy writer coming up with this, Garth Brooks sits there for another quiet moment in this bedroom in the dark alone. And he goes, you know, the devil, <laughs> the devil never wrote no love song. Right, it's like a sweet little ditty on the guitar, and has like a little moment of like, yeah, yeah. There it is. Do. Yeah, I think that'll do. And it ends on like a nice, quiet moment. And you're like, what the hell was that? Yeah, it's very soft. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> listened to Will Ferrell going like, Schmorgus, Borgus, Blorgus. I just got bit by the love bat, and it's driving me Oh my me god, mad. that's right. That one is so funny. Yeah, and then it ends with a sweet love song. It's so weird. What the hell is this? Is this supposed to be the origin story of the time Garth Brooks learned how to write a love song about the devil? <laughs> I wonder if that one even made it to air because I think that might have been on our DVD that had the like Will Ferrell. Yeah, that had stuff that didn't make it to air. Maybe. I'm not sure that that was that DVD only says the best of Will Ferrell. It doesn't say the worst of Garth Brooks. No, it does not. <laughs> but it has some other like good Will Ferrell ditties that 
that didn't, didn't make, make it, it to air. So that may have been one of them. It's true. Old Prospector. That is a baffling. Yeah. Skit. It's so weird. But it is about a musician making a deal with the devil. Yeah. No, the devil is supposed to be very good at music. Yeah. That comes up a lot. A weird thing. I know. These are actually all musicians that I'm going to talk about. Weird. So yeah. Okay. So um. So this guy, Robert Johnson, never really denied the rumors and kind of leaned in and implied that they were true. <laughs> and then he, he died early. And I think this is mentioned because it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe you make a deal with the devil and then he's going to, you he's know, take you. That's right. He's going to take what's his. Um, he died at 27 with the rumor being that he was poisoned by a man who saw him flirting with his wife. And Robert Johnson was buried in an unmarked grave whose location is still unknown. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know. I kind of want to read more about him. That's interesting. Very. Okay. So then um, Led Zeppelin is a band that's said to have had dealings with the devil. Oh. Um, they Well, they definitely have. So like Jimmy Page is very into like magic with a K and the occult and stuff like that. Um, so, but he says it was just that and not devil worship. They never kind of drifted into that. Right. Um, he had Alistair Crowley's Do What Thou Wilt inscribed into the grooves of Led Zeppelin 3's vinyl, which is awesome and then later bought his house um and then this isn't about satan specifically but still in that realm of like stuff was going on with led zeppelin um jimmy page said that robert plant was basically like waiting around while the bands like the musicians of the band um, robert plant was a singer were, were like tooling around playing um stairway to heaven and then all of a sudden he got up and started singing along and basically 80 percent of the final song was done just in that shot like not recorded but just like he started singing he went for it and it was like perfect and robert plant said that he was just kind of like waiting around and all of a sudden he like grabbed no pad and it felt like he wasn't writing his hand was just writing out the stuff like he was channeling it maybe Ooh. and um people also say and i listened to it and i don't agree there are a couple of things that like you can kind of hear people say that if you play stairway to heaven backwards you hear oh here's to my sweet satan the one whose little path made me sad whose power is satan he'll give those with him 666 and all those fools who made us suffer sad satan there are a couple of things where it's like certain, like, but Zayden. it mainly just sounds like ba- backward talking. Yeah. Um, I like that devil. The devil has a little path. Me too. And then Satan did this and it walked on his little path. A little path. There was another <laughs> version where it said that he said like Satan, like when he's mad, brings us to his tool shed. Sad Satan. Whoa. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Very. Um, this one is very weird because I first just literally read this anecdote and fully expected to go to the video of this interview with Bob Dylan, where he alludes to have been making a deal with the devil. And I was like, okay, so somebody like took this out of context and it's gonna be obvious. He's joking. He seems quite sincere. Really? Yes. So in a 2004 interview, he says, yes, he says that his success (laughs) is thanks to a deal he made years ago. And now let me go to the transcript. Yo, he's, he must've been kidding. William, I mean, I, he's not playing as though he was kidding. I really thought that somebody would be, was taking this out of context. He seems evasive and weird. Okay. I mean, do you also, I couldn't believe how much he talks like that. Like, I don't have like a ton of Bob Dylan knowledge. And he was very like, <laughs> um, <laughs> so he says, um, the interview is the interviewer says, why are you still out here being like, why are you still touring and like doing all this stuff? And Dylan says, I'm not going to do his voice. He says, well, it goes back to that destiny thing. All right. I'm going to stop now. Okay. It goes back to that destiny thing. I made a bargain with it, you know, long time ago and I'm holding up my end interviewer. What was your bargain Dylan to get where I am now? Interviewer. Should I ask who you made that bargain with? And they're kind of laughing and Dylan is like not smiling or things like uh, with the chief commander. And the interviewer goes on this earth and Dylan goes in this earth and in the world we can't see. It's weird. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. Could that mean God? God. Yes, completely. But it is very weird. I, it's a weird way to just phrase something about God. He's acting very like strange. I don't want to say. <laughs> yeah. I believe in something that a lot of people don't. Do. <laughs> yeah, right. But like, I don't, you know, I don't think I should talk about it. Yeah, it is a weird interview. I encourage you guys to look it up. It's like a 41 se- second clip on YouTube that I fully expected to come back and be like, yeah, I mean, people say whatever. But I was like, that is very strange. He does seem to be implying that he made a deal with the devil. It'd be awesome <laughs> if he was matter of fact, like, I spoke to the devil. I talked to the devil in the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> made a deal. 
Like, Mine great would it be? I know. For someone to just come out, it'll be like, you know, so how do you, what, to what do you attribute this success? And he worked hard. And yeah. Like, no, I. Oh, I have a pact with the devil. I made a pact with old Scratch. You can see the mark. Yeah. With the fiend. Look at, look in my hair. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you. He told me to read his hair, and yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's and I, have lost his you know what? I buy it. Um, and the last person I'm going to mention, it's unsurprising that Ozzy Osbourne would have alluded sure. to make a deal with the devil. But in the stuff that I read, it actually seemed like that's just kind of like the language that he likes using and things like that. It actually seemed like he was just alluding to like having done crappy things in his life where yeah. he was like, I mean, I don't know what possessed me to do that. It was like the devil grabbed me or something like that. It didn't seem like he was really saying it, except for one, the devil. except for one interview where he said that he was watching The Exorcist and he was like, oh, I can relate to that. Yeah, I feel like the devil has taken me on. I didn't watch the interview, so it's hard to say like his mood and everything, but everything else, it seemed like just because he is obviously into dark, spooky stuff, like that's like what Black Sabbath was all about. They're like right. at least into the imagery and everything. That just seems to be like the point of comparison he likes to make. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And like yeah. I said, to be continued on other people's yeah, more contemporary pop people's dealings with the devil. Ooh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I'm very, very interested in that. Yeah. The Osbournes themselves feel like a bit of an Adams family. Oh, yeah. You're right. Right? Yeah, totally. They're all a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They do do what they want to do and say what they want to say. They do, but they seem to love each other. Yeah. And like stand by each other. Yeah. So, okay. Totally. Um. So that's it. Very cool. Right? Yeah. That's that's pretty rad. Yeah. I'm um, very curious to hear more. I really want to hear more about celebrities. I'll and definitely and do their it. Dealings with El Diablo. Yeah, I'll definitely do it coming out soon. It is very weird. I'm like, sure. There are a lot of things that are. I mean, I have to imagine that they either just like that imagery and then just go with it because they either don't care or they don't mind the leaning into yeah. it. But they're definitely, I'm not saying that I believe that like Jay-Z worships the devil and is part of the Illuminati or whatever. But there are a lot of things where it seems like he's making deliberate choices that are like things that nobody else would notice. But if you know, you're like, but that's like really? from Masonic scripture or whatever. Oh my God. No, seriously. Yeah. Oh it's goodness. very, it's very weird. Yeah. You know, like uh, 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 when you're a kid, people tell you about Bloody Mary and mm -hmm. you're like, oh no, that's fake, whatever. And they're like, well, they go in the bathroom and do it. And you're like, eh, <laughs> okay. I don't really want to. <laughs> yeah. And you're like a little freaked out. You end up doing it, but like you're yeah. freaked out about it. There must be people uh -huh. who are like on the cusp of fame or something. Yeah. Who are like, what would happen? I'll give it a shot. Yeah. If I just said openly to the air. Yeah. Like, hey, Mr. Devil Man. Uh huh. You know, make Play my, a song make for me. Dream come true. Like, or something Mr. Tambourine like. Man. Yeah. Bob Dylan. Yeah. Sure. Hey, Mr. Hey. Devil Man. I just say that song was get, always about the tambourine, man. Get a career going for me. Me, please. <laughs> 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 but like, I wonder if there's anybody that's like, on the off chance, let me see if I can just tell the devil. Maybe. I mean, maybe that's part of what Jane Mansfield was up to with um, Anton LaVey. Sure. Yeah. Even though the actual devil is in his deal, but maybe that's where some curiosity came from. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if you always know, like if you said to the air, uh -huh. if you said the phrase. Well, like, the winds begin to change. Would you say right now, Kristen, uh -huh. Mike, uh, <laughs> would you tell the devil that he can have your soul in exchange for X. Yeah, because it's all about your intention, and I am oh, not you actually. Think so it's not even like it's the words don't have meaning no. inherently. Even no, if you, you don't feel the emotion behind it. No, I don't think so. Okay, I think everything's about intention. I'm not a religious man, and there's something that still gives me pause about even saying it. I'm not. I mean, I didn't say it. I don't love the idea of saying it. Yeah. But... So, oh, well, also, you talk to ghosts. I what? Yeah, like occasionally you'll talk. Oh to well, yeah, I just like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that too. Oh, I I, I know what you're talking I do about that now. Too a yes, bit. So yeah. there's power. Mm -hmm. There's power behind language and like. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, you would. But say I do it. think if you could, if you, well, I mean, I'm not dying to. I'm not trying to get you to say it. By the <laughs> no, way, no, I know. Yeah. No, I know. I mean, I guess I would if you're like really busting my balls or something. But I, because I think that it's the intention behind things that well, make. Well, then them, what if you find out that it's like no, you said those I know. words in that sequence. I would say I can think it's, it's the intention risk. behind things, but right? maybe I'm wrong. Even if you totally don't believe. Yeah. You know, who's to say? And you're not going to prove Seems me wrong. Seems like a either. risky endeavor. Like, the to yeah. like Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Uh, who's like, you know, one of the most like. like Outspoken atheists. Yeah. yeah. If, if he was like, this is mental. Oh, my God. He started <laughs> like, you know, saying like, no, I'll tell the devil right now. I'll sell my soul to the devil for X. Yeah. Look, nothing happened to me. I'd be like, yeah, but you got to wait until you die. Like, yeah, right. Like, I'm are you sure? I'm not going to find out that you're right or wrong. You yeah. are. Yeah. You know, so either there's nothing or you end up in hell and you're like, this it, is mental. It, yeah. <laughs> It really is just words. That's all it takes. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not here to fudge around. Yeah. No, no. Mm, you got to play the game. You got to play to win. Just in case. Got to play to win. 
<laughs> Look, I'm not trying to tank my chances here. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. I'm only 32. Yeah. Let's give it some time. I'm not ready. Let's see how this thing goes. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. That's there you go. it. Uh, yeah. We're at the end of another episode of Guide to the Unknown, yep. everybody. Yep. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, yep. gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble it up. Mm-hmm. You probably already did. It's Yeah, you did. Now. You did. Yeah. yeah. You did good. <laughs> you did good. Maybe you can listen to this on your drive home or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you know? right, right. Our shows typically don't do well around the holidays. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Well, whenever us, you're listening, I hope you're having a good day. Well, maybe you're international. Maybe you're not doing Thanksgiving. That's true. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, have fun out there, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to get going, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, go listen to Black with the final episode. Yeah. Is out. Yeah. Can how the whole I thing can't believe out. what happened. I know. It's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Ugh. Uh, I personally find the ending to actually be a little bit emotional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it is. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you'll all check that mm-hmm. out and enjoy it. Yep. If you haven't listened to the show, you can now binge listen to the yeah, entire Yeah, that's thing. right. Oh, that's good that you can say that now. You can binge listen. Yeah, and yeah. pretty soon I'll be able to spoil stuff. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I fully intend to. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, go to skylarkmedia.com to check that show out. Subscribe, listen, review, and tell people about it. Yeah. Uh, even though it's over, the mm-hmm. show will live on. Gone but not forgotten. Yeah. Uh, go listen to... I have more of us. Yeah. Uh, you can rate and review Guide to the Unknown on all major podcast apps. That's right. Uh, Apple Podcast drops some reviews there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it always makes Kristen and I uh, smile. When yeah. We see a positive one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can follow us on social media. We're at GTTU Pod everywhere. And you can join our secret Facebook group by going to facebook.com slash groups slash GTTU Pod. Perfect. Yep. You can also go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash GTTU pod and donate to us. If you like the show, it's kind of like throwing us a tip for the um, hours of maybe hanging out with us you do during the month. And we can use that money to do cool things like go to the Adams Family Museum we should and that. then report back. Yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. Yep. Uh, you can also talk to us individually online. Yep. I'm at Chillin' Kristen on Instagram. I'm at Haunted Sponge. Mm-hmm. So we will see you next week for another spooky good time. But until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld go we. Bye. Hi, I'm Chucky. Hey, I'm Chucky. <laughs> the name's Chuggy. Chuggy? Chuggy. Chuggy. What does it say? Wait, what? I know. I'm there to a Dumbala. I dare do a Dembola. Grant me the power, I beg of you. <laughs> okay. All right.